Hi, today I have a problem for you, this problem about cystic fibrosis. Uh, cystic fibrosis is carried on the recessive allele, normal is dominant, a normal man and woman have one cystic fibrosis child and one normal child. What are the chances that the next child will have cystic fibrosis? And uh, as long as we told that we have uh, two normal parents, that means that uh, these parents phenotypically normal, but still have a gene for the cystic fibrosis, because one of the children have cystic fibrosis and another one normal. So uh, for the carers, we designate their genotype as a heterozygous, when they would have one allele that is uh, would be dominant, or we can put uh, capital A and another allele would be recessive and we can put small a for the recessive allele so this for example would be a female side and when we cross with a male who is also going to be carrier uh, we may expect uh, progeny or frequencies of the progeny as follows uh, in order to find it, we have to build a Punnett square. So one side would be for male, another side for the female. And now we can find uh, all possible genotypes. So capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, small a, capital A here, and small a, small a here. So, as you see, 75% of the children uh, wouldn't have this disease because at least uh, one allele present that is normal and this is dominant over the recessive. So, uh, the product of this allele that is uh, protein that is normal would be enough for uh, the whole uh, this genotypes be normal phenotypically. So we would say that 75% would be normal or as you see here 3 out of 4 and 25% there is chances that a child would be affected or 1 out of 4. So this would be an answer, because no matter what the genotypes or phenotypes of the previous children in this family, every time when they have a new child, uh, they would have 25% that their child would be affected, or 75% of the chances that their child wouldn't be affected. And uh, this is independent event every time, so uh, the chances would be would look like this. So um, I also want to try another combination. For example, what if uh, one parent would be heterozygous and another one normal? Uh, and uh, for example, we also can build a Punnett square and it doesn't matter who is uh, the gender of the parent who is going to be homozygous dominant and who is going to be uh, uh, heterozygous so we can put parent 1 and parent 2 here so it's uh, not gender dependent and uh, because this disease is not sex linked so here we would have capital A capital A capital A small a, capital A, capital A, and capital A, small a. So is it possible genotype for their parents? And I would say no, because uh, these parents have one affected child and one that is not affected. And here, when uh, one parent would be homozygous dominant, they wouldn't have any chance to have affected baby they would have 50% uh, uh, normal uh, for both alleles and 50% uh, 
would have uh, carers, but none of them would be affected with this disease. So all of them phenotypically would be normal. And so we can cross out this possibility, and this is only possible genotypes of the parents. So that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.